Hi everyone, it's Adam with Modulus Restoration. Today I've got a 70s, it's a mix of laminate and wood, Broyhill dresser, really nothing special about it. And I think I'm going to go ahead and paint it. So I'm just using simple green degreaser. I've got a bucket of rinse water and a bucket of clean water. And what I do is I rinse every piece off twice and then just set them in the sun to dry. I usually wash the insides of the cases too. And I left the hardware on because originally I thought I was going to reuse them. But I ended up not doing that. So I wanted to clean them all at the same time. So I'm just giving everything a scuff sanding. There really weren't a lot of major repairs, although there were some dings that I could have filled in, but just opted not to. And basically I just use like a very fine pad, which is, you know, surf preps kind of like, uh, I guess you could say proprietary grit. I don't really know what grit it is. I think it's somewhere between 280 and 300. And I just give everything a quick sanding with that and just make sure that everything's kind of scuffed up and ready for primer. So here's my usual drawer masking technique. Although with these large drawers, I could have used 36 inch plastic. So this is just my usual primer. It's BIN. I'm trying to just use it. I really don't want to go back and forth between water and oil based primers. So this is an Apollo HVLP. It's a Pro 5 LE. It's a five stage turbine and it produces around 10 PSI seal. I'm using a 1.8 and I try to stick to that with a high solid C cap and that's basically going to be for all paints and primers. Just a little tip for painting. You know whenever I'm doing either a custom job or just painting at my house, furniture flipping. I try to paint whenever or wherever it's the least hot at. In Louisiana, it gets really hot and that can really cause a problem for your paints. For my primer and my first two coats, I usually don't care that much. But when it comes to the final coat, I'll either wait till basically right before the sun goes down or as soon as I wake up before the sun is really completely up. Just 
just an intermittent sanding here. Just trying to get the primer a little flatter. If you notice there, I actually missed those two little um, drawer dividers with the primer. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, emerald urethane is pretty good as far as adhesion goes. You could really use it without a primer, although I'm not going to. So this is emerald urethane. You know, as much as I have a gripe with the dry time, it's so convenient and I've never gotten any issues from it from thinning it. It's almost always consistent and I've never gone back and felt it and said, oh, you know, this is tacky. This doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel like it completely dried. So I think that I'm just going to stick to it for now. Also, probably the most important part to most people, the color is Timberwolf. It's a Benjamin Moore color. It's kind of a cooler gray. And I thought it would be a good choice for a neutral for my boot. Just sanding the first coat here. You know, just let me know in the comments. I've been basically kind of doing longer videos. I tend to think that whenever I was first getting started, I really just wanted to see a detailed overview and, you know, close-ups of what things look like. That way, you can get a better idea when you're working on your pieces, you know, to have something to compare it to. But I can see that maybe some people just like, you know, the five to ten minute video link but I think for this channel I'd really like to do detail and not just a quick overview so second code going on here just something to think about 
you know, whenever you're using gray, it will throw you off a little bit because it'll look like you miss places. But really what it is, is that as gray dries, it kind of gets a differential color that is very visible in comparison to white or blue or other colors like that. So just be aware that, that it might not be necessarily that you missed a spot, but that it's just drying faster in that particular area. So here's the original hardware I ordered. They look really good, but they are so small. And that was really my fault because all I really read was the on center size. So these are some Brainerd adjustable pulls from Lowe's. They're not my favorite, but you know, I'm just gonna make them work and try to make the best of it. So these things basically have like a detent pin and what you do is you screw them in where you want to and that pin keeps them from moving and applies pressure against the back of your drawer face. It's a nice system but it's kind of a pain but you know it'll get you out of a bind if you need it. And for the tops, they actually had a false drawer hole there that was basically just to hold a pin for the original hardware. I just went with that. I didn't want to risk ruining the drawer faces with a new drawer hole. And here's the finished dresser. 
So thanks for watching.